awesome celebration song, an attitude of gratitude. <laughs> I've got an attitude of gratitude I'm grateful for this day For peace of mind and wellness I'm blessed in every way For spirit works within me And so it lives in you There's so much to be thankful for It's so easy to do I've got an attitude of gratitude I'm grateful for this place For joyfulness belonging And every happy face The spirit of abundance Surrounds our every need And when we act in gratitude We've got all that we need I've got an attitude of gratitude, I pass it on to you. With kindness and compassion, we'll probably come shining through. Together we can share the love, we've got all that we need. I'm so, oh, sorry. <laughs> an attitude of gratitude, we're sharing from the heart. With an attitude of gratitude, we're sharing from the heart. Awesome. Good morning. My name is Kay Yules. I am your trustee on duty today. Did it again. I'm on a roll. On behalf of, the, on behalf of Reverend Donna, the Board of Trustees and the practitioners, we welcome you to the Center, Sonoran Center for Spiritual Living. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your path, we welcome you here. Um, you, and here you will be validated and supported and encouraged to be all that you are meant to be. Our vision statement is love in action every day, in every way. We express this love by learning and living the principles of the science of mind. And on the back of your program, you'll find that declaration of principles. So please join me now in reading it. I believe there is an infinite intelligence operating throughout the universe. I believe this intelligent power is only good. I believe this intelligence expresses as me. I believe through my conscious use of this power, I create my life as happy, healthy, and complete. And so it is. Do we have any first timers here today? No? All righty. Um, well, we've got lots of food back there. I think somebody's going to explain some of the food in a little bit. <laughs> Um, and uh, so please, let's all join in, um, in um, beverage and, and getting to know each other just a little bit better. I would like to thank all the people who made this Sunday service possible. And that is, first of all, you sitting in those seats. I am so blessed to be here and to know uh, at least all of you, I think most of you anyway, by first name basis and, and just the hearts that are here. And for those that I don't know, I look forward to getting to know more. Thank you for uh, the ones who make sure that everything is set up uh, in the kitchen, the food, the, um, uh, and, and just getting this place ready, ready for the beautiful gathering that we have every Sunday. So please direct your attention now to the announcements inside your bulletin.
God in me beholds the God in you. It is all for our greatest and highest good. The God in me beholds the God in you. And you and I are one. Namaste. The God in me beholds the God in you. It is all for our greatest and highest good. The God in me beholds the God in you. And you and I are one. Namaste. Namaste. Good morning. Good morning. So we don't have any new people. That means we're all oldies but goodies here. <laughs> Some older than others. John and me. And I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, isn't it? So nice to be here. I just love the, I love the love that just fills this room on Sundays. And you know, no matter if you have a backache or not, uh, or whatever aches, it seems to go away when we're here. So let's just settle in. As we open today's services with love and grace and peace and all the attributes of the divine that fills each one of us in our chairs today and as we leave every minute of every day we are guided and directed by the divine if we just listen so we give thanks for this day for this place, for this beautiful building, for all the lovely improvements that we see as we enter. So much fun. So let us be filled with the healing love of the divine every day, this day, every minute. And so it is. Before I begin, I'd like to share an email I received from Ruth Bennett. We were conversing about this and that. Just so you know, she sent me also pictures of the Amazon River before and today. And it's pretty dismal. So here, here is what she said. So we, we, we want to hold Ruth and Dee in, in our prayers this week and always. We miss you too, Rosie, especially we rally when we are sitting in the dark due to blackouts. Severe drought and hydroelectric power do not work together. No electricity for 10 to 14 hours a day. Businesses are failing. People are out of work. I, get, I got my hair cut from a place a few doors down from us. I am sure I was her only customer that day. The haircut was $10, and I gave her 20 and told her to keep the change. This really touches me. She threw her arms around me and started crying. Nearly broke my heart. I sent D over the next day for a mani-pedi. <laughs> we are pretty well set. Our cooking range is gas. We have rechargeable light bulbs, solar lanterns, power banks, and our blessed Kindles will get by. So please hold them in prayer this week. Melinda? I got a follow up on that. They got one good rain. Oh, wonderful. They need, they need uh, hundreds of good rains, but that's a start. Thank you, Melinda. So my, my title today, of course, from Science of Mind magazine a couple of years ago, it says, count your blessings, elevate your attitude. When taking life for granted becomes the norm, gratitude gets pushed aside 
and the exquisite sweetness of having been given an unknown limited amount of time on this amazing planet goes unnoticed, unappreciated. This is from The Art of Abundance. Appreciation, gratitude, and thanksgiving, the motivating power that attracts and magnifies the hidden potentialities of life by Ernest Holmes. With thanksgiving approaching, are you ready to raise the altitude of your attitude of gratitude? Some Eastern teachings proclaim we are all born with the seed potential of all possibilities and that it is the seeds we nurture with our energy of focused attention that grow to fruition. What we focus on, our attention rises in the field of our awareness and becomes part of our experience. The challenging times, the tendency for many of us is to stare at what seems to be missing or what's wrong rather than the good that lies right in front of us. Practicing conscious gratitude. I lost my way. Shoot. Well, okay, here we are. Practicing conscious gratitude activates and directs the creative energy of life that nurtures that seed potential within, which contains the spiritual DNA of a life worth living. For most of us, expressing conscious gratitude is not something we generally remember to do because the collective consciousness obsesses about what's missing in our lives. You know, that big collective consciousness. We can transcend the vortex and gravitational pull of that collective consciousness with the conscious practice of gratitude. It's just a matter of remembering to remember. William Ward wrote, God gave you a gift of 86,400 seconds today. Have you used one to say thank you? When you think about it, a second or two is all it takes to practice gratitude. Who doesn't have at least a few seconds to spare each day for such a powerful practice? Then at the bottom of the page is the affirmation, today, we mindfully take stock of our countless blessings and say, thank you, God, knowing that when we focus on what is good in our lives, it simply and abundantly expands. Please bring me your prayer request today, no matter how tiny or how huge. It is our heartfelt privilege, all of us as practitioners, to pray for you and yours this coming week. If you want one, a one-minute miracle, don't be shy. Just come over and get one. They're free. <laughs> now I'll go and hold the high watch for all of us here, for sweet Peggy in California, for Ruth and Dee in Ecuador, and for everyone who watches us online. Blessings to you all. Namaste and thank you. Well, I guess now I'll I'll light the candle. <laughs> you know what this represents, that divine light that shines in each one of us. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you.
can feel the power of love inside me. Feel the power of love. I can see that evidence all around me. We To the truth I now embrace And my heart is open By spirit and by grace I can feel the power I can see that evidence all around me. We are the power of love. And my eyes are open to the truth I know. by spirit and by grace I can feel the power of love inside me feel the power I can see the evidence all around me. We Thank you, Namaste. That is so gorgeous. Yeah, we know it as a as a, a, a loud, happy, you know, fast song, and to do what you did with that is just—I felt every bit of it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Good morning. Well, tomorrow is um, Veterans Day, which honors the veterans of the armed forces. The observance originated in 1919 on the first anniversary of the 1918 armistice that was the beginning of the end of World War I. Um, originally known as Armistice Day, it became an official national holiday in 1938, and in 1954 the name was changed to Veterans Day. And since our theme this month is Attitude of Gratitude, I'd like to begin our Sunday celebration by asking if we have any veterans here today. And if so, would you please stand that we may share our gratitude by thanking you for your service and for keeping us safe. Is there anybody that's in? Don is. Peter. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, as I said in the E! News, we are through with the elections. 
and we've gone through a horribly contentious time in our nation's history. Friends and families have been torn apart. And it's time to take a deep breath um, as we mend those relationships and move on with the business of living. But I found that when I was looking at Veterans Day and honoring those who have gone to war for us, and as I looked through what we've just gone through in this election cycle, I found a common denominator. The belief that we need war to protect peace and the willingness to give up family and friends over an election outcome. Both of these ideas come from our human belief in duality and separation. In his prayer for my country, our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, wrote, and this is just an excerpt, the full, the full prayer is in the e-news. Um, but he writes, I know that success, prosperity, and happiness are the gifts of freedom and the divine heritage of everyone in this country that they are now operating in the affairs of every individual in this country. I know that divine guidance enlightens the collective mind of the people of this country, causing it to know that economic security may come to all without the loss of either personal freedom or individual self-expression. The all-knowing mind of God contains the answer to every problem that confronts this country. I know that every leader in this country is now directed to this all-knowing mind and has the knowledge of a complete solution to every problem, and each is compelled to act upon this knowledge to the end that abundant security and peace shall come to all. And I know that this democracy shall endure, guaranteeing to everyone in this country personal liberty, happiness, and self-expression. And so it is. I wondered what was going on in 1953 that caused Ernest Holmes to pen those words. And I found that we were coming into a time of recession and that we were engaged in the Korean War. So perhaps that's why he was focusing on economic security and peace. But the more I thought about what he wrote, the more I realized that if I believe that war is a path to peace, if I believe that four years of a presidency can overthrow our democracy, then I am adding to and continuing the neg negative practice of duality thinking. Methodist minister William Wallace writes, if we are unwilling to learn from history, we commit ourselves to reliving the mistakes of our ancestors. The peace of the land, the peace of the people, and the peace of the heart are inextricably intertwined. What is accomplished by force does not last. What is accomplished by love is eternal. Well, we certainly give thanks for everyone in service for our country. You and I, more than anybody else, need to understand that this is only part of the puzzle. Yes, we need peace. Yes, we need people who protect that peace. And what is accomplished by force does not last. What accomplish, is accomplished by love is eternal. My topic today is legacy of the heart. And I want us to look at the part we are playing in leaving a legacy of love to ourselves, our friends, our family, and our world. Ernest Holmes told us we are the forerunners of a new race of people. We are the arbiters of the fate of unborn generations. We are the custodians of the chalice of truth. We have a song to sing. We have a joy to bring to the world and love and peace and happiness. Most people see a problem or a challenge and set about fixing it. Most people don't know what you and I know, that everything is created twice. Ralph Waldo Twine, in his book In Tune with the If and It explains, everything exists in the unseen, 
before it is manifest, manifested or realized in the seen. And in this sense, it is true that the unseen things are the real, while the things that are seen are the unreal. The unseen things are cause. The seen things are effect. The unseen things are eternal. The seen things are changing. The transient. The very universe in which we live is the result of the thought energies of God, infinite spirit that is back of all. At first, I think it's kind of hard to wrap our heads around this. And yet, if you and I are to find true joy and happiness, we have to move from the region of secondary causes into primary causation, where the originating energy is to be found before it has yet passed into manifestation as a condition. And we find that originating energy within ourselves. Scripture says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And that is our originating energy. It is what we think, not as a fleeting thought or idea, but what rests deep within our heart, how we look at life, how we see others, how we see ourselves. We may forget this as we become embroiled in the affairs of the world, but you and I are reminded when we come to our Sunday celebrations, when we take a class or come to spiritual circles or the men's breakfast or the writer's group, when we are inspired by something we read or find on YouTube. And we are assured of this process when we can actually track something wonderful that is happening in our life back to that originating thought. I made a list of things that I wanted to be when I was single. And I met John. And I think that that was part of that whole process. As I became more and more loving, more and more honest, more and more authentic, John came into my life. A demonstration. A demonstration. One of the dev definitions of the word legacy is something transmitted or received from an ancestor or predecessor or from the past. Something is passed on to us by every relationship. And whether it is apparent or not, that something is love. It may be buried, like, or, like my mentor Arthur Chang says, there's gems in ugly wrappers. So things may come in ugly wrappers, but when it's unwrapped, we find love. God and love are synonymous, and since we are each God in expression, our, <clears throat> our truest nature is also that we are love and expression. And while many people wear masks that hide that truth, if we can look beyond the mask, we can find the love. When I perform a wedding, one of the things I tell the couple is that shortcomings may appear that were once hidden in a golden mist. <laughs> Excellencies may seem to fade in the glare of the noonday sun. Be unmoved in your devotion to each other. Remain confident and strong amid the seeming reality of present imperfections. Always believe in the ideal you saw it once. It still exists. It is the final truth. And while those words are meant for a wedding couple, it is true for every one of us. When we believe in the ideal that love is the final truth, then we can remain confident and strong in our love for each other, for ourselves, for our country. And we can remain confident that love is at the heart of the world, and what is accomplished by love is eternal. Marianne Williamson says, relationships exist to hasten our walk to God. When surrendered to the Holy Spirit, 
When God is in charge of our perceptions, our encounters become holy encounters. When we consciously invite spirit into every relationship, we take that first step toward a holy encounter. And since spirit is love, anything unlike love begins to dissipate like clouds against a noonday sun. We cannot experience a holy encounter if we are standing in judgment. If love is to be the legacy of this relationship, then we have to see it as loving and move beyond any appearance to the contrary. If we take as our lesson that all things come from either love or a need for love, then those issues for which we harbor resentment must be approached from a new light. When we can see actions or behaviors that we judge as unloving, as coming from a need for love, then we have shifted the energy of that encounter. If we invite spirit into our relationships, we can see that our first order of business is forgiveness. When people behave unlovingly, they have forgotten who they are. They have fallen asleep to their oneness, their love, their Christ consciousness. And our job, yours and mine, is to stay awake. If only love is real, then nothing else actually exists. Behavior based on fear is not real. True forgiveness is a discernment between what is real and not real. True forgiveness is staying awake to the love that is real. Alan Cohen tells this story. At a cavalry outpost in the Old West, two soldiers vigilantly fended off an Indian attack, determined to fight to the finish. One of the soldiers tapped the other on the shoulder and informed him, I have good news and I have bad news. The bad news is that we are out of ammunition and there are no reinforcements. What's the good news, asked the other soldier. There are no Indians. <laughs> when we are awake, we don't need to defend, we don't need to take part in a battle of egos. When we invite spirit into this kind of relationship, spirit reminds us that the battle is not real. There are no Indians. Hand in hand with forgiveness is a suspension of judgment. Since we are all one, all thought is ultimately about ourselves. So when we judge and condemn another, at some level we are judging and condemning ourselves. This does not mean that we overlook harmful behavior, but it does mean that we separate the behavior from the truth of that person. If we see someone abusing a pet, we may find a way to stop the behavior, but we must see that person as crying out for love as well. Condemnation is not transformative. You and I are the forerunners of a new race of people. We are the arbiters of the fate of unborn generations. We are the custodians of the chalice of truth. We have a song to sing. We have a joy to bring to the world in love and peace and happiness. There is no egotism in that statement. It is a challenge to each one of us who knows the truth that God is all there is and that you and I are expressions of God. There is no duality, no power of good versus a power of evil. Again, Dr. Holmes tells us the time has come and we shall have left the apparent evil behind when it shall be rolled up like a scroll and numbered with the things which were once thought to be. We are human and we play in the world of duality. But we are also divine. And in that divinity, we find that capital S self that is the custodian of the, challenge, of, the, of the chalice of truth. Who we are, what we believe, what we bring to this world will affect unborn generations. So we have both a responsibility and a privilege to live our life from love. Love is who we are. Love is what we practice, 
and love is a legacy that we leave. Thank you, namaste. Time for our offering. Um, chance to put that divine law of circulation in process. So, won't you join me in our offering affirmation? My gift goes forth to heal, press, and bless all that it touches. It is evidence of my conviction that God is the source and substance of my supply. I share generously of my good, knowing that it returns to me, multiplied abundantly, and so it is. Thank 
Thank you for all that you do to make this a really special place. Your financial contributions, your heart, your love. There are things going on in the background all the time. You just don't know it, and it's just really amazing. It seems like whenever there is a need, that need is met. And most of the time it's met by you guys, so thank you. So let's take a moment to close this portion out in prayer, and then uh, please join us for refreshments. And, um, and please take those cupcakes. I don't want a single one of them. <laughs> but, but it was so it was so cute and so sweet of Crystal. Crystal is, she's our um, adopted child, really. And she, she's the one who cleans our, our church as well and has for years, and, and her mom before that. So um, what a sweet thing that, uh, that we have this sweet, precious woman in our life, both in John's and my life and in all of your life, because she's part of our church. So let's take a moment to just know that right now there is one divine intelligence, and that intelligence is love itself. And as you and I turn to that love, we help bring it to the world. I speak my word for anyone who's experiencing any kind of a challenge. I see that Mary Ann's not back with us, so I speak a special word for her. And again for Ruth and Dee and all the people that are affected by the um, lack of rain. There are so many areas that need our help. And if we can stand in the truth that love is all there is, then we help to bring about healing to those who need it, restoration to that which needs restoring. So I simply give thanks that we are able to offer this prayer this day. I give thanks that we are a community that shares its love and that we are a family that loves each other. And so it is. Don't make me stand and sing stand. So let there be peace, I am a stand for peace. Let there be love, I am a stand for love. Let there be joy, I am a stand for joy. We are living a new world now, so let there be peace.